variety of experimental procedures, including the frog tongue, web of the foot, and mesentery, the bat wing, the hamster cheek pouch, and the rabbit and mouse transparent chambers have been employed for the microscopic study of living tissues. We shall demonstrate the rabbit ear chamber, a technique ideally suited for research dealing with the study of blood vessels and cells in a living animal using high resolution, high magnification microscopy. The rabbit ear chamber technique was first developed by Sanderson, who in 1924 reported a new method for the microscopic study of living growing tissues by the introduction of a transparent chamber in the rabbit's ear. The ear chamber was later modified and elaborated on by the Clarks and their associates and used for a variety of experimental purposes, including their re extensive report in 1936 on the observations on polymorphonuclear leukocytes in the living animal. Up to the present time, there have been many modifications of the ear chamber technique, and it has been used for a wide variety of experimental work. A few investigators who have used it include Flory, Warren, Harvey, Ebert, W.B. Wood, and Allison. In 1949, Ebert and associates employed the chamber and developed a special punch and template and a simplified version of the ear chamber itself. This later simplification was used by Wood and Associates in their studies in 1951 on the cellular immunity of acute bacteremia, including their description of intravascular leukocytic reaction and surface phagocytosis. We have here one of the chambers similar to the one that first described. It is composed of two parts. The circular plastic rim to which is attached the circular glass cover slip and the plastic base plate. We have here a diagram which shows uh, the features of this chamber, the circular plastic rim, the circular glass cover slip, and the base plate with the three supports, each of which is identical to this one shown here at greater magnification. Notice the recess where it is important that when the chamber is assembled, that the clearance between the undersurface of the glass cover slip and the top surface of the central observation platform be between 20 and 25 micra. For if this clearance is less than 20 micra, vascularization will be inadequate. And if the clearance is greater than 25 micra, the tissue preparation will be too thick for high magnification microscopy. Let us now see how one of these chambers is made in our instrument shop. The most critical step in the preparation of the plastic ear chamber is machining the recess in each of the three supports attached to the base plate. A jeweler's lathe is employed for this precision work. Periodically, the base plate is separated from the lathe and plastic chips are removed with a soft camel's hair brush. A careful inspection is made of the recess in each support. Since the supports have been cemented into the base plate, the recesses are machined synchronously on the lathe. base plate is then inserted in a dial micrometer. The difference between the top surface of the polished central observation platform and each of the three recesses is accurately measured. To achieve the desired clearance, it is frequently necessary to reinsert and turn the base plate in the lathe and thereafter repeat these micrometer measurements. 
The surgical technique by which the plastic chamber is installed in the ear is relatively simple. Holes are punched completely through the ear. Next, the skin is carefully dissected and removed from the inner and outer surface of the ear in the area into which the chamber will be inserted. It is imperative that the cartilage and blood vessels be left intact. Finally, the chamber is installed and cemented in position. This is the area into which tissues will grow and later be used for microscopic examination. This rabbit has been prepared for surgery. He has received the injection of long-acting penicillin, tranquilizing drug, and intravenous anesthetic agents. The ear has been prepared by the complete removal of the hair by the use of a common cosmetic depilatory agent. Since post-operative infection is one of the major complications of the ear chamber technique, we have used all possible precautions to minimize bacterial contamination before, during, and after surgery. These include the use of an aseptic surgical technique and preoperative treatment with penicillin. Using a modification of the template originally described by Ebert and Associates, the holes can be accurately positioned in the distal portion of the ear with the large central hole immediately adjacent to the central artery and vein. Once the template is satisfactorily positioned, it is securely clamped on the ear by tightening the neural nut. The punch is then inserted into the guide holes and using a surgical hammer, the punch is driven completely through the ear. The neural nut is loosened, the punch separated from the template, and the template removed from the ear. The holes are now precisely located so as to match the supports and central observation platform of the ear chamber base plate. By blunt dissection, the skin is carefully separated from the outer portion of the ear. In our experience, most important is the preservation of the cartilage and major blood vessels, particularly the central artery and vein, the marginal vein, and their adjacent vessels. The skin dissection is extended laterally so that a circular area measuring approximately 30 millimeters in diameter is free. This dissection will be easier and more consistently successful if rabbits having ears measuring at least five inches in length are employed, such as a hybrid between the Flemish giant and the New Zealand strain. By meticulous blunt dissection, a circular area of skin measuring approximately 30 millimeters in diameter is also freed from the inner surface. This dissection should be extended about two millimeters beyond the holes for the three supports. Care is taken to preserve the cartilage, for it alone will support the chamber. By sharp dissection, the skin is completely excised from the area into which the plastic ear chamber will be inserted. Caution should be taken so as not to cut the exposed cartilage. A 
drop of fresh blood is now placed on the circular glass cover slip, spread out as a thin film, and permitted to clot. When the chamber is assembled in the rabbit's ear, this clot will represent the central observation area. During subsequent weeks, this clot will undergo organization with the ingrowth of newly formed blood vessels which eventually may be used for microscopic observation. The skin is then removed from the outer surface of the ear. Special care should be taken not to injure the exposed blood vessels and cartilage. Upon completion of this stage, a circular area of skin measuring about 30 millimeters in diameter or approximately 2 millimeters larger than the base plate will have been removed from both the outer and inner surfaces of the ear. The central artery and vein, as well as several of their smaller branches, have been preserved. The base plate is now positioned on the outer surface of the ear and inserted into the hole. The cartilage is securely pressed against the base plate. Each of the three recesses is wiped dry. The chamber is now assembled in the rabbit's ear by inserting the circular plastic ring into the recesses of the three supports. The installed ear chamber is carefully inspected to make certain that the dissection of the skin has been adequate. To protect the base plate, gauze is placed on its under surface. A metal pressure plate is next inserted on the upper surface of the circular plastic ring and firmly clamped. This procedure will hold the cover slip and ring securely against the three recesses. To cement the circular plastic ring to the supports, a small amount of ethylene chloride is placed on each joint. A mixture of plexiglass in ethylene chloride is then applied. This produces an exceedingly firm seal. About an hour later, the clamp is removed. The pressure plate is then carefully freed from the circular plastic ring. Finally, the installed chamber is carefully examined. Postoperatively, the animal receives penicillin during the next two weeks. Approximately six to eight weeks are required for this blood clot in the central observation area to be replaced by fully mature blood vessels and the tissue to become free of cellular debris. During this time, the unnarcotized rabbit will be trained to sit quietly in a rabbit box and accustomed to handling and microscopic observation of the ear chamber. This is the electronic, optical, and photographic equipment employed to photograph and observe the rabbit ear chamber through the microscope. The rabbit is here being placed under the microscope. The microscope is in the inverted position so that the rabbit may maintain its normal physiologic position during the microscopic observation. We have here the direct current power regulator, the microscope illuminator containing 
an 18 amp, 6 volt ribbon filament lamp, the heat absorbing filter consisting of a glass heat absorbing filter and a water cell, the microscope, the optical beam splitter, the observation eyepiece, and the 16 millimeter Cine Special motion picture camera, which accommodates a 100 foot magazine permitting continuous shooting for a little more than two minutes. ear chamber is placed in our special adaptation of the mechanical stage. It is clamped in position in the chamber holder. Notice that this is a calibrated mechanical stage which greatly facilitates the repeated location of the same site for further microscopic study and photography. Under the microscope, most conspicuous are the irregular meandering venules. Flow within the venules is considerably slower than within the arterioles. A thin arteriole arcs in from the bottom and bifurcates. The minute capillaries empty and fill. Muscular arterioles are capable of both dilatation and complete constriction. Blood flows from the capillary network into the venules. The pale globules rolling along the venule wall are white blood cells or leukocytes. Individual red blood cells or erythrocytes can also be distinguished. At higher magnification, the rolling of leukocytes along the walls of the venules is conspicuous. Within capillaries, the procession of erythrocytes, leukocytes, and minute platelets in the plasma is apparent. A leukocyte adheres to the capillary endothelium and temporarily blocks blood flow. Leukocyte adherent to the endothelium shows amoeboid activity. Lymphatics may be identified. Leukocytes drifting within the lymph vessel demonstrate the lymph drainage way. At magnification of 1,000, individual leukocytes adherent to the vessel walls may be identified. Red cell rouleau may appear. Minute platelets are well seen. At 1,350 diameters magnification, leukocytes may be studied during their firm adherence to the endothelium. Both amoeboid motility and endocellular movement can be observed. Using phase contrast lenses, the walls of the capillaries and the venules are most prominent. Cells can be distinguished within the perivascular connective tissue. Erythrocytes, leukocytes, and numerous minute platelets flow slowly through capillaries. The characteristic ebb and flow of capillaries is apparent. Collagen fibers within the connective tissue are prominent. 
Despite the brisk flow through the capillary lumen, leukocytes adhere momentarily to the capillary endothelium. Using a 1200 foot magazine and a 16 millimeter motion picture camera equipped with a high speed motor, we may shoot at speeds up to 144 frames per second. At 96 frames per second, blood flow rate is reduced to one quarter. Flow within a capillary and adjacent venules can be observed in slow motion. The momentary sticking of leukocytes to the endothelium can be studied in greater detail. For most purposes, however, the smaller Cine Special motion picture camera is employed. We have demonstrated that the rabbit ear chamber technique may be an extremely valuable tool for the high resolution, high magnification observation and photography of the tissues in the living animal. This technique may be of immense value for the further investigation of the intimate cellular mechanisms involved in a number of disease processes, including inflammation, neoplasia, metastasis formation, and vascular alterations resulting from a variety of agents such as drugs and radiation.